Hi, I'm Garrett. This is my story. Lies have shaped me from the beginning. You're gay, you're effeminate, you're not a man. These lies that I was told kept me from being able to see myself as I truly am. And by the end of high school, I embraced the gay identity I'd been assigned because I felt like I had no choice. This must be who I am. My perception was that I was rejected from an early age by most of the men in my life. I felt that my father was not pleased with me. I felt that my brother hated me. And most of my male peers didn't want anything to do with me. This hurt me deeply. I don't think I was aware of the hurt that it was causing me, but what I did was I shut myself off. I closed my heart. I don't know exactly how I did that, obviously, but I did it, and I did it well, because for a very long period of time, I wanted nothing to do with men in any way. I wanted no connection to them, and I started to draw closer to women and see myself more as being like women than being like men. The more I did this, the more I started to see men as something different from myself and find myself attracted to them in the way that I now know I should be attracted and am attracted sometimes to women. I continued to follow this path in my mind in high school and as soon as I got out, I began to embrace it in the way I lived. I started uh, drinking, using marijuana, and going out to clubs, frequently getting so drunk that I didn't remember from one day to the next how I got back and forth from the clubs, smoking so much marijuana that it caused me chest pain and to vomit, be sick, just causing all sorts of problems. And at the same time, telling myself that I was having a good time because I was living out my true identity. I was living out the identity that had been assigned to me from an early age that I didn't know I had a choice in. So I kept doing these things, thinking eventually if I do enough of this, if I have sex with enough men, if I look at enough pornography, if I use enough marijuana or drink enough alcohol, then I'm going to finally come to the happiness that I'm looking for. But all it did was lead me deeper and deeper into misery. I would describe myself as being happily miserable. I convinced myself that I was happy even though I was pissed off most of the time. I was angry, foul, yelling at people, always aggressive when I was driving, always angry at work. It just became how people described me and it became another thing that I started to believe about myself, that I was angry. Because I believed it was part of who I was, I didn't at first see anything wrong with it, but I just started to have more and more problems, mental health problems, physical health problems. At that point, I stopped dating men and basically started using pornography as my coping mechanism. I became increasingly dissatisfied with my life at the same time that my career as a hairstylist was taking off and I was becoming more and more successful. And once again, was being told that that should make me happy. I should be happy because I'm successful in my job. I should be happy because I'm living out my true identity as a gay man. And inside, I was becoming more and more sick. That sickness showed itself in losing clients, in losing friends, in losing connection with my parents, with my brother. I hated my dad, I hated my brother. I told myself that everything that was wrong in my life was because of them. And this showed itself in the deteriorating quality of the work that I did. As that deteriorated, I lost more and more money. As I lost more money, I couldn't afford the alcohol and the weed anymore. And as I smoked less, my mind cleared. And as my mind cleared, I started to see myself as I was at that time, which was a 38-year-old man living in a basement, playing video games, looking at pornography, basically living like a grown teenager. And I was disgusted with what I saw. I had nothing to show for my success. I had no relationships. Most of my friends I was alienated from. My father, like I said, I hated, and my brother I had no connection to. So I started praying. Even though I didn't believe in God, or the God of the Catholic Church at least, I started talking to him and asking him to help me because I wanted to change. At one point, I was desperate and I started crying and I told God that if he would help me get off marijuana, I would do whatever he wanted me to do. Nine years ago, he gave me that gift. I went to my parents' house for a week and after that I never smoked marijuana again after having smoked it daily for about 15 years. Immediately, I felt drawn to serving God in some way. I wasn't sure what that meant, 
but I knew that I had made a commitment and I wanted to keep it. I started exploring. My mother started sending me material, helping me understand what the Catholic Church believed and taught so that I would hear it from the church rather than through YouTube. I didn't want to believe what I was reading. I wanted to hate the Catholic Church. I wanted to continue to live out the identity that I thought was who I really am. But the things that I was reading and what I was hearing were so logical. And the people that I was listening to understood things the way I did and were able to find their way out of that understanding into the truth, converted my heart and my mind slowly. God worked very slowly with me. He allowed me to have the relationship with him that I needed to have in the beginning, which basically was a God who accepted that I still looked at porn and that I got high sometimes. And though I know now that he did not accept those things because he knew they weren't what was best for me, he allowed me to live that way because he knew that was all I could do at the time. I continued to slowly step back from this life and slowly embrace my Catholic faith again. And about seven years ago, I was confirmed into the Catholic Church. Before being confirmed, I went to meet with the priest. While meeting with that priest, he asked me a simple question. Have you heard of courage? I had not heard of courage up to that point and I didn't want anything to do with it because I didn't want anything to do with friends, chastity, and being accountable for my behavior. I'd lived a very irresponsible life up to that point and the idea of being responsible for anything that I did, any of the choices I made, just that by itself repulsed me. But I decided to give it a try, so I started attending meetings. In the beginning, the meetings made me very uncomfortable because I'd made every effort in my life to have no connection with men. I didn't believe that I could have a proper loving relationship with a man and I was so afraid that I would fall in love with a man that I decided I would just not love men at all. As I attended more meetings, the sharing in the meetings helped me to connect more and more with my brothers and sisters in the community and as that happened, my heart started to open unfortunately, which is how I felt. I didn't want my heart opened. I liked that it was closed because I felt safe. I had to make a decision that I didn't want to be safe anymore and that if I wanted to be who I was really supposed to be, I would have to be willing to be open to things that could possibly hurt me. So through the friendships and the apostolate, through the chaplains who are like spiritual fathers to us, and through therapy, which has helped me have a new relationship with my father and my brother, things dramatically changed in my life. Those changes have led me to a place where I have many male friends now. I have a good relationship with my dad, I have a good relationship with my brother, I am open to being loved by men in a healthy way. And at the same time, it's a very uncomfortable place to be. It's very painful because of my sensitivity. I am constantly being challenged by allowing myself to be loved because my perception of what is and isn't loving is so distorted from having exposed myself to pornography and having lived this lifestyle for so long. But slowly, God is purifying me, healing me in ways that I didn't think were possible. And one of the main tools that he's using to do that is the Courage Apostolate. This is my story. Does it resonate with you? Does anything in it sound familiar? Are you happy living the lifestyle you're living? Or do you tell yourself you're happy because you think you have no other choice? The Catholic Church offers us other choices, and Courage International wants to help us explore those choices. If you'd like to learn more about Courage or find your local Courage chapter, go to couragerc.org. God bless you.